what's up guys, Joker here. Today we're going to be doing another GPU showdown. Now usually when I do these, it's usually, uh, you know, a mix of maybe SLI cards versus a higher tier card or two relatively spec cards from AMD versus Nvidia. But today we're actually going to be taking a look at two GTX 970s and actually both of them from, G from EVGA. One of them I already reviewed back and I believe it was April, it was the GTX 970 SSC edition. Really great card, it's the one that I've been using in my test rig all of these months when all of these big games have been coming out during the big holiday rush, and that has been an absolute beast of a card uh, in testing a lot of these games at 1080 and 1440. It's an absolute powerhouse right out of the box. It just has a really insane overclock straight away. As soon as you take it out, you put it in your system, it's got a really good overclock. It's got the ACX cooling uh, with the dual fans, so it's, you know, a reliable cooler that they've been using for a couple of years now, and they've gone through a couple of different iterations of it, so it's just a solid, good, air-cooled card. Uh, but recently, just a couple weeks back, they came out with the 970 Hybrid. Now, they're not using the super, super clock on this particular card. It's got really just, just the super clock uh, GPU on it from EVGA. Uh, coming out of the box, this is running at, a, at 1140 megahertz, uh, while the SSC card was running at 1190 straight out of the box. The boost on this is 1279, while the SSC is 1342. The memory is at 7010, while it's 7012 on the SSC, so really not much of a difference uh, there. Now, obviously, I was able to do some overclocking with both of these cards, and that's really one of the big reasons I wanted to do this video, was to see the overclocking potential on something like a water-cooled card. Since I've never had a water-cooled card here on the channel before, it's something I wanted to test out. I wanted to see if I was able to push, push the overclock much further on the core, or the memory and see what my results were after that, as well as see what kind of insane temperatures we can get with running a water-cooled card, because they are advertising this as running 40 degrees cooler than the reference-style card, mind you. Now, that's 40 degrees cooler than the reference blower cards from NVIDIA, not the EVGA ACX cooler. Uh, in my testing, I ran both of these, um, you know, maxed out. Actually, what I did is, I just like I have right now, I have Heaven and Valley running simultaneously on the test rig behind me right now on the 970 SSC edition, which is actually testament to how quiet this card is, because I doubt you guys can hear that, hear this uh, H4N picking it up in the background. And I just ran this basically for about a half hour on each of these GPUs because I wanted to see, uh, you know, how far the temps would go with my max overclock. And we'll get into the overclocks in just a moment. Uh, but the max temperatures I was getting on the SSC, SSC card from EVGA was 77 degrees. Which is not that bad, honestly. That's really not that bad. I would be totally, uh, you know, fine with that temperature. Um, you know, considering that I did have it overclocked uh, on the SSC card to 1542 megahertz. So we were over 1500 on the core and 3703 on the memory. Now you have to remember that that is uh, that 3700 that 3703 that effectively gets doubled which is effectively 7406 on the memory, and with that I was seeing a max of 77 degrees, but going around in realistic gaming scenarios, I was seeing around 73 degrees average, that's really where the card uh, liked to hover on the SSC card, so really not bad at all, perfectly acceptable temperatures, you're not going to damage or break anything there. Uh, so in comes the hybrid now, I wanted to see how far I could push the overclocks uh, on this. As far as the cooler on this is, is concerned, it is hooked up to a 120 millimeter radiator, which I hooked up to the rear side of my case, exhausting the air out the back through the radiator. But on top of the graphics card itself, which does have the shortened PCB, it's running a reference style cooler. So it's a blower style cooler, which is going to help pull that hot air out the back of your case, and you've also got the added benefit of the water running through there, through the radiator, and these nice sleeved, cable, sleeved cables from EVGA, uh, so that's helping keep the card cool as well. Now, on the EVGA hybrid card, I was able to get the core up to 1550, which is only 8 megahertz more than the SSC card, so nothing that's really going to, you know, blow you away, uh, but on the memory, I was actually able to get it all the way up to 3804 which is effectively 7608 on the memory. So we got a decent bit more on the memory versus the 970 SSC card, and that did help out in some of the benchmarks, which we're going to look at all of those uh, in just a little bit. But as far as the temperatures were concerned on the hybrid card, I was seeing an average of around 39 degrees most of the time, like pretty much all of the time that I was like running regular benchmarks and things like that. It was around 39 degrees 
constantly. Uh, but when I did run both Heaven and Valley at the same time with the overclock b cranked up to 1550 and just let this thing run for like a half hour, it topped out at 44 degrees. So that's like the theoretical like maximum temperature limit that I really saw with this quarter. Not necessarily the limit, but the highest that I was able to see the 970 hybrid go to, which is absolutely insane because that's like 29 degrees below what we were seeing on the 970 SSC card. So 29 degrees cooler, it's about 50 degrees, uh, you know, more. So really you're getting a lot of cooling there uh, for that little bit of extra cost. But really what it comes down to is, uh, you know, how does that relate to performance? Because I did say I was able to get a little bit more of an overclock uh, out of the 970 hybrid versus the 970 SSC from EVGA. Uh, and I went ahead and I ran it through a whole suite of benchmarks. I ran it through uh, some, you know, a little bit older titles, but also a lot of newer games in here. We've got things like Just Cause 3, Fallout 4, Witcher 3, and everything in here was run at completely max settings unless otherwise noted. You'll see it noted at the top if any ch settings were changed, but unless it's noted, everything else was cranked up to the highest settings, highest anti-aliasing, everything at 1080p and 14. I didn't bother benching at 4K because I know these cards being 4 gigabyte cards really can't handle 4K all that well and you would really need two of these which well I have two now if you even wanted to try to tackle something like 4K uh, and even then you would really be looking at like a 30 FPS 4K experience if you wanted to have things turned up you'd really have to turn down quite a bit if you wanted to run 4K on 4 gigabyte cards, in my personal opinion. Uh, but these are still really strong cards for 1080 and 1440, even in a single GPU solution. I've seen that in testing all of these games, um, you know, coming down the road here during this big holiday rush, all these big titles coming out, and I've been impressed time and time again just how good the 970 is as a single GPU solution, even at 1440p. So let's go ahead and run through these benchmarks now, and you guys can get an idea of what type of performance we're seeing uh, with the 970s, as it was a good thing just to test again, even with the SSC card, because it's been a while, and I was running on the latest NVIDIA drivers here, which just came out. Those drivers being 361.43 WHQL from NVIDIA. So we're running on the latest NVIDIA drivers as of the time of me making this video. So let's go ahead and run through those now with these two graphics cards as we always like to do with those rockin' benchmarks. <laughs> Okay, so we got to look there at the benchmarks on these two cards. As you can see, obviously, since they are both 970s, they're neck and neck. But the 970 Hybrid was just edging out the GTX 970 SSC Edition. And we could account that to the fact that it does have a slightly higher overclock. And it also is running considerably cooler, about 29 degrees cooler on average. So with that, we're also going to see the benefit of GPU Boost 2.0 kicking in uh, a little bit more maybe versus the 970 SSC card because that does heavily re uh, rely on temperatures. So lower temperatures means you're going to get a higher boost. And you're going to have to factor that in also when you are overclocking, especially uh, even with something like the 970 SSC, since it is coming with such a strong overclock out of the box, you're really only going to be able to throw like around 125 megahertz on there somewhere around that uh, that should be around your starting area for your overclock on a card like that since it is already so 
strongly overclocked, whereas something like the hybrid, I was able, it was around uh, 196, I believe it was. I, I believe I had tried 200, and that was like 1554, but that was unstable in some games. But then I cranked it down to 196, which made it 1550 exactly, and that was completely stable in every single benchmark that I run it, ran it through. At that, at this, these, at this uh, overclock settings that I had on the hybrid card, I had zero crashing whatsoever. I had initially had some crashing actually on 15, 1554 which is why I chose to dial it back a little bit and get that even 1550, which was a good number, and I was happy to see that it was completely stable. We got good temps on the 970 hybrid, and I was just really blown away with the temperatures you can get on a water-cooled water card like this. It's really opened up my eyes. I mean, obviously I knew with water cooling it was going to run cooler, but just wow. Um, at the end of the day, is it something I would consider buying? Probably not. This isn't really a product necessarily for me, but I can definitely see a market for this the type of people that are already buying all-in-one CPU uh, water cooling solutions and you want to have a water cool GPU as well if the temperatures are really, really important to you because you are spending about $50 to $60 more versus the EVGA 970 SSC card and you're getting pretty comparable performance as far as uh, just frame rates are concerned. You're really just, uh, you know, you're getting the water cooled card so you're getting better temperatures and you can maybe do a little bit more with your overclocking but you're also spending an extra fifty to sixty dollars uh... and i also want to mention that the nine seventy hybrid was also a little bit louder in my testing now of at idle the 970 SSC actually runs at zero decibels. The fans don't run at all uh, until you reach a certain temperature threshold. So at, at idle, completely silent, the 970 SSC card, while the hybrid idles at around 29% fan speed, and it was definitely audible during that. Uh, when I did run benchmarks like the ones right behind me right now, uh, with the two maxed out completely, uh, I saw the fans get up to around 34% fan speed, which was the max that I saw that go to, and that was about the same that I saw on the 970 SSC edition as well. And I did run some audio testing here so I could show you guys uh, side by side the decibel readings that we were uh, seeing coming out of these cards. Uh, so we were seeing on the hybrid card, it was running at about 55 to 57 decibels, um, while on the SSC card, it was running at 49 to 51 decibels under, under full load. So you are getting a little bit quieter of a card in the 970 SSC edition as well, which really shouldn't come as a surprise uh, because I've talked about this in the past where air is going to be quieter than a water-cooled solution because you're having to deal with things like the pumps and the water. You can hear sometimes you'll hear things like water trickling uh, inside the pump, inside the reservoir, so that is something you're going to have to deal with. So if you are concerned about noise, if that's more of a chief concern to you than something like temperatures, then you may want to go with the SSC card because it is going to run uh, a little bit quieter compared to the hybrid, but the hybrid is going to run a lot cooler compared to the SSC edition. Uh, so that's really all I've got to say about these cards here. I've given you guys all of the facts. Hopefully that's enough for you guys to make your decision on which one of these cards would be right for you. But let me know your thoughts down in the comments below as well as if you have any questions and maybe I can answer those for you. And if you want to pick up either one of these cards, I'm going to put links down in the description below to where you can pick these up or check out more information on either one of these offerings from EVGA. So I'm going to go ahead and get on out of here, guys, and I will catch you next time. Terrible.